Welcome back, Wastelanders. This is Solo Clone Broadcasting from the relative safety of the Navigate National Forest. And today I'm going to walk you through outfitting a base. Where to find the items you need to make those pieces necessary to get into high gear and get that base up and running. So first we're going on a little trip across the wastes. I have a location in mind at one of the furthest edges of my territory, so a FOB, or Forward Operating Base, is in order. Not a whole base, but an outpost. This way you can see some of my tricks in building and a little bit of my style, and I can help all of you along the way. First up is cars. You're usually going to run into these first, and what we're looking for is pipes, springs, batteries, small engines, and headlights. Scrap metal is nice too. Always check the car for loot first. Sometimes calipers are granted in cars, so be mindful. Another perk is copper from radiators and spotlights, which I carry on my tool belt for looting outdoor locations. You're not going to get everything you want in the first car, and stacks of items is better than no items. So hit up at least 10 cars for a sizable amount of supplies. If you're wondering where to find a wrench, look in an apartment building's bathroom sink for pre-built ones, or locate the schematic. That can be anywhere, but easiest to find over at Crack of Books. Here's where hunting gets more specific. This is identified by the radio antennas towering above. This is the comms tower, or old relay station. Here you'll find computer and control bags, which carry pipes, scrap metal, and cable. You can get cable from cars, but not very much at all. They're usually located here along the sides or inside the main structure. All along the way, you run into houses of different varying degrees. Most, if not all, will have a fridge, a stove, and a toilet, and will yield pipes, cable, and scrap iron. But remember, once they're broken down, they will not reset to give you loot for later. Here's a good one, Bob's Cafe, which is a POI, or a point of interest. It's pretty easy to get in, just go through any door. Once you get inside, you're going to find two coins in the registers, you're going to find multiple stoves, multiple refrigerators, and those little refrigerators that hold beer, water, empty glass jars. But remember, every 30 days the loot resets, so if you destroy all this, it won't reset. Here's another POI, but it's unlike any of the previous spots. The bunker. Inside, it looks innocuous enough, like an old garage with a fence and backyard, but it hides a formidable secret. Underneath the sheet metal floor panels is a stairwell access which leads to a really strong door. I suggest chipping the concrete out. It has way less hit points. You'll find everything you need in here just to get your starter base going, or you can turn this into a starter base of your own. At lower levels, it's going to take you a while to get through that concrete, but that's okay. Inside is everything you need to get a real proper base going, or use the bunker itself as a starter base. There's comps, stoves, refrigerators, toilets, just about anything that one could ever want. Plus, it's all made out of concrete and below ground. Here's another one. As for POIs go, this one has a ton of useful items. A lot, and I mean a lot, of computer banks, and a half dozen working stiff crates. This one's called the Waste Treatment Plant. Found in larger cities, they have a ton of good loot. Here's where I'm more likely to find auger parts and tool and die sets. Since it's in a town, the Z count can be high. Don't bother breaking down the fence, it'll give you time to loot. Search the perimeter, specifically the ground, looking for the hatch that leads you into the lower levels. Like I said before, you can use any and all places as a starter base, and this is a good one, but there's respawnable loot. So make your way along the fence until you come to the back corners. And another way in is inside the fence itself, if you want to frame over, there is a hole in the building right next to the comp's second floor. You can go in with three frames there, or you can use the ground hatch located here on one of the corners. I prefer to hop the fence and use the three frame method to go in here. Otherwise, if you go through the hatch, there's a lot of stuff to break before you can get into this lower portion of the room here. You can see there are tons of comps everywhere. Lots of cable, lots of scrap iron, lots of pipes. And there's also a secret crate that everybody seems to miss located right here. Don't forget that one. Remember to be careful when breaking them too. So after days of walking and scrounging, I have the items I need. And I already knew the location I wanted it into prior, the Savannah. I'm going to go with an above ground fob with a shooting pit incorporated into the design. Let's jump into it, shall we? Ah, the powers of editing. <laughs> that took me a little while. So here's what a fob for me looks like. Fighting platform above and a killing pit below. They'll walk right in if you stand in the middle. Easy peasy. You got bars on the side to shoot down from, a railing so you don't fall off, a tower for a lookout, and you can put your forges up there. Simple up, don't forget to put the one block at the bottom, miss it on the ladder so they don't climb right up to your base. All in all, 
Easy peasy. Let's get the show on the road. Okay, here's a shoot through floor. If you're standing up here in the middle, Zed will walk right to you and fall down on the inside. They won't even swing at the wall, so you can just shoot it from up above. Same thing applies from here, but if you're on the outside edge, they'll try and tear down the pillars supporting your base. But it gives you a good shoot through, and it keeps spiders from climbing up here. The only thing you really gotta watch out for is raiders. I mean, it seems simple enough. And in also walking here, you should have been doing some hunting. So the first thing you're gonna put up is a campfire. And if you watched any of the previous episodes, you know not to put campfires on the ground, so you don't have to burn yourself unnecessarily. So get the first item up and running as fast as possible. Also along the way, you're going to be wanting to picking up clay and stone. Now take the pipes and the hides, and you can craft a bellows. A bellows is a key component inside the forge, and you can't make them without it. Once your bellows are crafted, head up to the top of the tower. It's up to site for a reason. It's out of zombie detection range. As long as it's 25, you should be okay. Once you got everything built, make sure you have clay and iron. That's going to make forged iron for the next part of the project. If you're fortunate to find a tool and eye set or a pair of calipers at this point, congratulations. They're difficult to find anywhere. This is where forges start to pay off. After you make some forged iron, get an anvil going and a cooking grill. Make the items you don't have. There are primary forges and secondary forges. Make sure you have the tool and die set, the anvil, and the calipers all in the primary. That's the one that's going to make bullet tips and the like finer implements. Then, once you get everything going, make sure you get a sizable amount of items. Don't forget sand for glass. Oh, and nails. Lots of nails. Next up is a cement mixer, which is a skill under the character stats. You can't make this item until you have that unlocked, and you can't make stronger bases without it. Put all the items together under the recipe, and get mixing. But now you're probably getting the hang of this, so you're going to need a secure place to start storing some of these items. Remember those nails and that forged iron? Keep those in your inventory for building this next one. Get some gun safes going for the really secure things. And then, like the cement mixer, making the workbench, it's also a skill that needs to be unlocked. Craft as many as you think is necessary, and I always craft a couple extra, just in case I got marauders or griefers, and I always hide the best stuff near the land claim blocks, so it makes it a little harder. Now it's really starting to come together as a base. Remember those nails? Yeah, this is half of why they come in handy. Storage crates, and they put these nice little labels on too, so make as many as you need, and then make a couple more, like 25 more maybe. Go ahead and place the crates however you see fit, and you can stack them on top of each other or in rows, it doesn't really matter. Just whichever one you're more favorable for. If you're a digger, make more supplies. If you're a weaponsmith, make more weapon boxes. So on and so forth. Another use for nails is making signs. Signs can be used to locate certain item boxes for loot organization, uh, conveying directions on the map, warning signs, just being all right funny, however you see fit. But they're a lot of fun to make. There, that ought to do it. Remember when I talked about land claim blocks? Don't make them obvious. Hide them wherever you can. And then, Patch them out smooth so they're not noticeable. Incorporate them into the construction. And then hide everything. Well, that does it for episode four, outfitting a base. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it helped you. And if you did, slap a like on it. And as always, Wastelanders, stay safe out there. going to be starting another series in addition to the tutorials. I'm going to start doing base tours. And I found a crazy band of Siberian mute Russians in the wastes out there. And I think you guys are going to get a real big kick out of it. So stay tuned for that. See you out there, Wastelander.